Amen. <laughs> Good morning, Trey. Good morning. Good morning, Trey. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, please stand for a call to worship. Our opening sentence. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all of you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. Thank you, God, for inviting us. In your presence for worship and having you present for worship. You have blessed us to see 365 days of this year. Yes, yes. It is our privilege and honor to worship you today. Yes. Please accept our worship and inhibit our praise. Make your presence known to us and renew our hope for today and a new year. Forgive us our sins and help us to walk closer to you. Be with us now. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Then you will join us now for our opening selection. Jesus is the light of the world. To be found in your African American Heritage Hymnal on page 217. Join the triumph of the skies. 
Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the light. today are as follows. Please join us daily December 26th through January 1st, 2024. Uh, for the Trinity Kwanzaa Observance, we will meet daily at 10 a.m. to 10.15 via our conference call line 202-926-1179. The access code is 963308. Come, learn, and celebrate together. We are asking all committees interested in, and interested individuals, etc., to submit dates for 2020 for 2024 by December 28, 2023. Um, so that we can build our calendar for 2024. This includes standing meetings, annual days, uh, as well as the platform you may want to use to meet. Example, the conference call line, um, Zoom, or in person at the church. Uh, we know the requested deadline has passed, but if you have not submitted your dates, you're late. No, I'm just kidding. Um, please do so as soon as possible. Uh, join us for watch night service tonight at 10 p.m. We will gather 10 to 10.45 for a potluck fellowship gathering. Bring your favorite dish and share with others. At 11 p.m. we will transition to the sanctuary for a time of singing, prayer, and testimony. Save the date for the annual Martin Luther King Scholarship Breakfast. It will be held Monday, January 15, 2024 at 7 a.m. at the Montclair High School George Ennis Annex. There are some tickets available. Please see Mr. Victor or Mrs. Florence Deming if you plan to attend and need a ticket. Mark your calendars to join. No, I, I would just want to say I apologize. <coughs> this Martin Luther King celebration is extremely important from an educational standpoint. Uh, I am offering 10 tickets to the church. So if you plan. 
plan to go just let either myself or my wife know and so I can make sure that you are accounted as a, as a part of the group of 10. So we will have a table for 10 of you. Oh, thank you. Amen. 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 And thank you in advance. <laughs> um, mark your calendars to join the Montclair African American Clergy Association, Montclair Interfaith Clergy Association, and the Montclair NAACP for the annual Martin Luther King Day celebration on Monday, January 15th, 2024, at 12 p.m. at St. Paul's Baptist Church. I pray that you make note of these announcements and govern yourselves accordingly. Biggest thing, y'all, is watch night. Come on out and celebrate going into 2024. Bring the year in right with be present with the Lord. It is now time to pass the peace of Christ. For those worshiping via our Facebook stream, you are invited to share the peace of Christ in the comment section. Those worshiping on the phone line may unmute yourselves by pressing star six so that you can share the peace of Christ with one another. Those worshiping in person are invited to stand and share the peace of Christ with your neighbors. Just simply say, God bless you, and I love you. God bless you. God bless you. share our Kwanzaa observance led by Miss Brenda Burwell. Thank you. 
this week to be the person for my own purposes. For Jesus, I felt very unfulfilled in my sense of things to have to do more for life, like I wasn't doing what I was called to do. So for years, I prayed and asked God to reveal to me his purpose for my life. I promised that if he showed me what he wanted me to do, I would do whatever it was, no matter what it took, because I knew that if he directed me to it, it would bless my life. After Joel was born, I felt a very strong pull to do something to help not only my family, but our community to become financially independent and build generational wealth. I believe that financial strength is critical to building a successful future for our black community. Eventually, in praying still for my purpose, God gave me my answer. It was not at all what I wanted to hear. It required a much bigger sacrifice for me and my family than I would ever choose to make on my own. But he told me to do it. So I stepped out on faith and did what he said. I'm not sure that I've figured it all out completely, but I certainly kind of feel like I'm on the right track. I feel more fulfilled every day, and it also helps me to help my community take steps towards building wealth for the next generation. That's me at work in my life. But I ask you, in honor of the fifth day of Kwanzaa, to think about what matters most to you, where you can make a real difference in your community. Then ask for purpose, because when you leave with purpose, good things will happen for you and your family. Hello. Amen. Thank you so much for that interpretation of Mia. Purpose. Now we will hear the sixth principle of sponsor. A body body below the page. Love that. Creativity. And that's the sixth day of Kwanzaa. And in, and in this particular principle, what I have learned and what we all will learn and live to live with is uh, how are we treating our community? So, as a community of people, we should always do as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited them. And with that, I'd like to give a personal note on how I really feel about community. When I grew up, I grew up in a community where farm life was it. African American children had no school. The church was almost nothing. But my granddad said, and he looked at all of us and he would say, honey child, you got the power to make something beautiful in this world. We all do. But when we can't share our creativity, our energy, it makes us mighty frustrated. Then he would capture my imagination by telling me one of his favorite tales. So I could understand what he was talking about. It was about the church. And as he talked about the church, he decided that the family that he had, nine children he had, that was a lot of children to try to have on the farm. No church, no school, and a lot of children running around. So he got busy and he built the church in my community or in our community. And from that church, you hear me pray quite often about this group of family members. But in that group, he decided, oh, I don't really have the books. I don't have the, the background for education. So he started sending his, his children when they would get to a certain grade. There were two ladies in the community who were never married. They decided to work with my grandfather to build a church. And from that church, he had a school, so he needed the teachers. So he started getting these two teachers who were women who were very bright with accepting anything that had to be done. Creativity, she was, they were so creative, you, you would always know that they were coming and what they were gonna say. So let me bring you forward. From this day, that church started back in the 50s and what happens is, right now, we have lawyers, doctors, anything you can name, a lot of farmers who have still decided, and we still own the land, believe it or not, we still own the land, the church is still there, and 
Monday. Success for those in the education system. 
Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. On this last day of 2023, I'm giving glory for a year filled with joy. And sorrow. sorrow. Okay. It says sorry. So, sorrow. Okay. Uh, amen. Uh, healing for Kenny, the, the, the family and friends of Helen Mack, Haiti, Jamaica, and all the areas that are war torn. May we all find peace. Amen. Lord, hear our prayers. I want to ask God for getting me and my group Come on, I don't write that bad. From New York City safely. Okay. <laughs> getting me and my group, I'm gonna say home back from home from New York City safely. Um, I'm sorry. To say. I pray that we will continue with a healthy life through the new year for family and friends. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. You know, I just got to tell you, you know, it's, it's an adjustment when you're looking at a computer screen and then you go to like natural handwriting. So it's like your eyes are like, okay, <laughs> let me uh, focus here. And you know, before I read this next one, I got to tell you, I scanned my email in the mornings and stuff, and one of the things that popped up to me besides, you know, like you'll see stuff and it'll say, oh, Macy's 25% uh, 20, off, and this, you know, you delete, delete, delete. And one thing that stood out to me was says, pace yourself 2024. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. pace yourself 2024. Uh, please pray for Yvonne and Paul Williams. Uh, mm -hmm. Please print. <laughs> no, I'm going to skip. I can't see this other part. Now, this is the Bible. Okay. The Bible for real. <laughs> um, okay, let's pray for Yvonne and Paul Williams, Hodgson family, world peace, um, our church family, and Sharon Harris. Lord, we are our prayers. Prayers. Thanking God for permitting us to see the close of another calendar year. Thanking God for permitting us to come back into the sanctuary for collective worship. Thanking God for permitting my five siblings to celebrate your son's birthday together. Yeah, your son's absolutely, amen. I pray for the healing of our nation the people in it, and for the rest of the world. Peace. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear I ask the church to pray for healing and wholeness for Cheryl and for a successful heart procedure for Donna. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Just, yeah, I have a problem with that one. <laughs> and Prayers for Mr. Hanny. Mr. Hanny suffering with stage four prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Michael Barr in emergency room at hospital in Silver Spring, Maryland. Michelle. Lord, Michelle. 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 Oh, Michelle. I'm sorry. Michelle. Okay. Thank you. Michelle Barr. Oh. in the hospital. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Lord, hear our prayers. <laughs> um, we also have, you're right, that print to, to type your son. Yeah. We're also praying for, I'm um, thanking God the Father for our Trinity family, praying for Deacon Howard Gardner. We're asking for healing for um, Victoria Crowley. We're asking prayers um, for, lifting up prayers for our municipal leaders, local, state, and federal level. Asking for traveling mercies for the Banks family. Thanking God for Trinity Church for allowing me to be in your presence 2023 via Facebook. Um, 
It truly has been a blessing. Um, thank you, Dr. Wright and congregation for this blessed opportunity. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Um, okay. Uh, praise report from me. Uh, Jeremy was released from physical therapy, so she's able to likely get back started to um, some sporting activities. So and if she feels any pain, she just needs to go back. So I just want to ask the, to keep her in prayer and, uh, and have God keep watching over her. Mm -hmm. And my son is uh, just finished his sixth hour behind the wheel. Ooh, okay. So definitely <laughs> pray for him and, and for yeah. pray for you. You know, I will say, you no, know, pray more for my wife. <laughs> you know, I'm the patient one, uh, so you know, I've been kind of like teaching him a little bit along the way. But he's done, done he's done really, really well. Um, just. To, yeah, so I spent maybe three hours with him before his first day of um, behind the wheel for two hours. And the guy comes back, oh, we need a little work. You know, he still has to, you know, work on some turning and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, no problem. If that's it for me showing him three hours before you got to him, I'm not with <laughs> God is in control. Yeah. Um, um, we pray for those on our prayer list. Uh, Louise Brunton, David Brunton, uh, Brenda Burwell, Doreen Butler, Hazel Clark, Irita Gallup, Hazel Hassan Bay, Joseph <laughs> Waffman, Laverne Parrish, Bernice Cashel, Peggy Place, Jerry Fretlow, Joanne Remberg, Bertie Walker, Lois Williams, let us pray. I'm also lifting up the family of Michelle Thiel, who passed last week, Saturday, I believe. But we just want to lift up the family this morning. Yes, and also, um, still keep praying for the uh, Mac family and all of our friends and family of uh, Helen Mack um, as we uh, continue to celebrate her life and the angel that she is and being received into heaven. Uh, gracious and loving God, thank you for your continual mercies that do not fail. Thank you that you have kept us and allowed your compassion not to fail but you have met us with no new mercies every morning. Thank you for the privilege, opportunity, and invitation to worship you. Not only that, but to bring all of our cares and concerns to you, um, to you, concerns to you. Thank you for loving us and sending us Jesus. I pray now that you hear our prayers, hear us and answer us, Intervene for us to help us. Give us peace and healing, forgiveness and restoration, sensitivity to your guidance and obedience to you. Please forgive us for the ways we have dishonored you. Give us a renewed spirit that seeks to please you. Help us to grow in our walk with you. I pray that you comfort all who mourn Please strengthen those who are weak. Give rest to those who are overwhelmed and simply tired. Thank you for your care for us and, and that when we need it, you lead us beside the proverbial still waters. Now, God, I pray that you meet every need, answer every prayer, Bring peace to our world. Help us to be instruments of your peace. Thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I invite all who are willing to be and able to stand and join the choir and sing the prayer that Jesus taught us. Taught his disciples to pray. The Lord's Prayer.
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Worshiping 
rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servants in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then, as a widow to her, to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, um, as long as God gives me strength, um, I like to preach to you from the subject, Restored Hope. Restored Hope. Have you ever had a moment in your life when something was promised to you, but it took a long time coming? As a matter of fact, it took so long coming that you began to doubt whether or not the promise was going to be fulfilled or if it was just a lie. But then there was something that gave you a glimmer of hope. It reminded you that even though it was not the promise fulfilled, it gave you a glimpse of the future that it would be fulfilled. Have you ever had that happen to you? Perhaps my words are too vague and you can't fathom what I'm talking about. It's like, I mean, maybe I did. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Can you be a little bit more specific? Let me see if I can make it a little more plain. Have you ever had your parents promise to give you a specific gift and you believe them? Because they were your parents and they had not lied to you heretofore? However, it took a long time for the gift to arrive, for the gift to manifest, for them to do what they said they were going to do. And you began to doubt that they would keep their promise because it was so long in happening. And a lot of things came up that delayed your promise. You began to worry that maybe your parents could not or would not do what they had promised you to, that they would do. Maybe money was funny and their change was strange. Maybe they had changed their minds. Maybe you had not behaved yourself well enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe all the things in the world, all you know is that they made you a promise and the promise had not yet been fulfilled. But while they had not given you to um, but then one day they asked you to tell them again what was that thing that you wanted again? What was the um, that particular radio, that particular um, bicycle? What kind was it? And simply by them asking you to tell them again, it gave you hope. It gave you hope because they had not forgotten about you. And while you still had not been given what you had been promised, the fact that they asked the question gave you hope that it was on the way. They were going to do it for you sooner rather than later. Beloved of God, that's what happened in our text today. God had promised the Messiah would come. There were multiple Old Testament prophecies that supported this promise. However, it was a long time in coming. Even with the angels making all of their announcements during the Christmas season, 
what we know as the Christmas season, and the shepherds and the shepherds' visit, it was not widely known to all the people that the baby was born and that the baby which was born held this particular significance. For most people, they were still waiting God, waiting on God to fulfill God's promise to send them a Messiah who would redeem them and deliver them from their oppressors. Yet on this day, the day that we enter our text, on this eighth day after, after Jesus was born, Simeon was in the temple. He was guided there by the Holy Spirit, not necessarily knowing exactly why, but simply obeying and showing up where God told him to show up. Can I pause parenthetically here and just give you um, a little bit of extra preaching? We have to be um, attuned to what God is telling us and go where God is leading us because sometimes we don't know why God is sending us where God is sending us. Sometimes we don't know why God is telling us to do what God is telling us to do. Sometimes we don't know why things are panning out the way that they are panning out. But we must trust and believe that if it's happening, God is doing it and is ordering it and has a purpose in it. Yes, yes, yes. And so here we are on this day. Simeon shows up. Not necessarily knowing why, but obediently being where the Holy Spirit tells him to be. He was at the right place at the right time because he was at the temple on the exact day that Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to be presented and officially named him. They showed up while they were bringing their sacrifices for their infant son. And when Simeon saw the baby, God revealed to him who the baby was. Simeon praised God because God had kept God's promise to him. God had told Simeon, Simeon, before you die, you will see the Messiah who is born, who will come to save your people. Yes. Simeon said, now, you know what? I can die in peace. He told the parents of the baby, Mary and Joseph, all of these things, and they were amazed. After Simeon left them, there was a prophet named Anna who was serving in the temple. Let me pause right here and help you to understand a little bit of the social structure in the temple. In the temple, you have the Levites who would serve, the priests and the Levites who would serve. And they would serve according to their courses. If you remember the story um, just a little bit before this, that when Zechariah was serving in the temple, it was his, his time or his season to serve. That's when he got the word from the Lord that Elizabeth was going to have a baby. And so they would serve in the temple. They would rotate through. Every once in a while, somebody would rotate through. These were the standard um, people who, who worked in the temple. But there were also other people who lived in the temple. There were these people, these widows that lived in the temple. What happened would be they had lost their husbands and they were beyond childbearing age. They could not remarry and therefore they lived in the temple and they were taken care of by the offerings that came into the temple. In exchange, they also made service to the temple. But this particular woman, Anna, was a prophet. She was of the family, family of Samuel. She was Samuel's daughter of the, of the tribe of Asher. She's serving in the temple. She's 84 years old. She had been married for about seven years before her husband died, and this has been her life. And at this exact moment, she's serving in the temple. She never left the temple because that's where, that was her life. That was her home. At that moment, she came and she started praising God. <laughs> what in the world is happening? You come, you see this young family, and you just break out into a praise of the Lord. Because again, seeing this child was a fulfillment of God's promise. Anna told everyone who was asking, everyone that she came into contact with, about this child who had been born and who would redeem Jerusalem. Please note that nothing had changed in their circumstances. The only difference was that there were two people, um, that, that there were two people testifying that a child who had been born would grow up to fulfill God's promise to redeem Jerusalem. It had not happened yet. But two people saw a baby and they said, oh, but it's going to happen. 
The people's hope was restored because they saw a glimpse of the future based on this baby. Love of God. Friends, I am suggesting to you that you can have restored hope as well for your future, for all the things that God promised you. How can you have restored hope? There are at least three things that I see in this text that I'm going home to get my glasses and prepare for tonight. Amen? The first thing that I see in this text is that you can have restored hope because <laughs> of what you see. Yes, that's an oxymoron, and it's kind of it's kind of funny to me since I'm not seeing much of anything. But here's what I see in the text. I mean, right? No, I mean, did anybody else get that? It's kind of you know. Um, but but here's what I see in the text. As they come to the temple, as Mary and Joseph come to the temple, fulfilling the law in order to give an offering, Simeon sees the family. More than seeing the family, he sees the baby because he's in the right place at the right time where God told him to be. At the same time, Anna sees the baby. And when both Simeon and Anna in their individual moments see this child, they have restored hope because they see that, wait a minute, this is not the promise. I mean, the child has been promised, but he's not delivered Israel yet. But he's going to. The one who will deliver us has been born and is in the world. You know what? I can rest in peace because I recognize that God is up to something because God is keeping God's promises. Beloved of God, I'm here to let you know that you can have restored hope when you see what God is doing. When you can see the runway before the takeoff. When you can see all the groundwork that God is laying. When you can see, wait a minute, it's not yet here, but everything is happening and is coming into place in order for God to keep God's promises. Beloved of God, I am suggesting to you that you can have restored hope, not because you have everything that God has promised you, not because you have everything that you want, not because you have all the answers to your prayers, but you can have restored hope when you see that there's a change happening, that there's something that is different from what it was before. It's not here yet, but I can see with this, it's on the way. Beloved God, I am suggesting to you that you look around in your life and see where are the places that God is giving you hope. Where are the places that God is saying, listen, this is not exactly what you asked for. But if you look at this, it's, lean, it's lending itself to the possibility that the thing which you asked for is indeed going to happen. Thank you, baby. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> you can have this restored hope when you see what you see. It's not exactly what you wanted, but it's on the way. Yes. It's as if um, you were sick and you went to the doctor, and the doctor says, Oh, I know what's wrong. You have a little bit of a touch of the uh, whatever, and you need this medicine. Yes, you got the cooties, and you need the cootie medicine. Circle, circle, dot, dot. Go ahead and take your cootie shot. Right? <laughs> and while you still have the cooties, you have hope because you have medicine that has been proven to work. Yes. You still have the cooties. You are, no, you are not yet cootie free, but you're on the way. Yeah. That's how you can have restored hope. It's not yet, but I've got something that lets me know the promise is on the way. Yeah. Thank you. But not only can you have restored hope because of what you see, you can have restored hope because of what the Holy Spirit says. Notice what happens in our text today. Simeon goes to the temple because the Holy Spirit guides him there. It may or may not have been his turn to serve in the temple, but the Holy Spirit says, get up and go. And when Simeon goes to the place where God sends him, he sees what God shows him and he has restored hope. In the same fashion, when um, Anna gets up as her as is her as her um, um her, her custom every day, and she's serving in the temple when she's going about her work, can you imagine? For eighty four years, she was um, an adult. She was married for seven, and then she went to the temple. Can you imagine all her life? God, why did this happen in my life? Why did my husband have to die? Why? Which, by the way, at that time was a good old age. Why God, am I still here? So 
bed. But because she was there and she saw the baby, she heard what God said. The Holy Spirit spoke through her, spoke to her, and said, this is the child who will grow up to redeem Israel. Beloved of God, both Sam Simeon and Anna heard um, what the Holy Spirit said to them. And beloved of God, I am suggesting to you that you can have restored hope when in your prayer time, in your study time, when you've been reading, when you've been at your lowest place, God lifts up your head and whispers in your ear and says, it's not over yet. When God whispers in your ear and tells you the thing that you've been waiting on, keep on waiting because I'm going to do it. When you hear what God says, you can have restored hope. Beloved God, every once in a while, God has to remind you of what God said. Every once in a while, when you're ready to throw up your hands and Allah, when you're ready to throw in the towel, when you're ready to give up and quit, when you're ready to say, listen, I've had enough and I can't take it anymore. God reminds us and pulls us in by whispering in our ear and says, keep going. It's not finished. I am not a man that I should lie to the son of man that I should repent. If I have said it, I will also do it. God has to remind us sometimes when we have forgotten the promises of God that God is in fact a way maker, that God is in fact a miracle worker, that God is in fact a promise keeper, a light in the darkness, that God is a healer, that God is one who opens doors, that God is a provider. God reminds us. Yes. Yeah. And when God reminds us, it restores our hope. Yes. Yes. God reminds us that way that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Wait, I say on the Lord. God reminds us. Do not be weary in your well doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. God says, wait just a little bit longer. Amen. My promises are short. My promises are yes and amen. So be it. Yes. So you can have restored hope by what you hear God speaking to you. Perhaps you're like Mary and Joseph. And it's not that you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to you through somebody else's words. Yes. Mary and Joseph heard the words of Simeon saying that this child is a special child. This child has been sent here for this time. This child will see the risings and fallings of the times in Israel. This child will endure this. But Mary, brace yourself because you will also have your soul pierced when you watch what your child is going to go through. Amen. They heard the word of the Lord. Through Simeon. But then they also heard the word of the Lord through Anna, who said, Yo, did y'all see this baby right here? Oh my God, I met this baby today. And God told me that this baby is going to be the one who redeems Israel. Yo, did you hear? Did you hear? I was in the temple working like I always do after all these years. And I met this baby who, because um, their parents brought him in, and he's going to be the one who redeems Israel.
speaking to you today that allows you to have restored hope. Mm -hmm. And there's one more thing that I see in this text. You can have restored hope because not only because of what you see. You can have restored hope not only because of what the Holy Spirit says. But you can have restored hope because all the signs are pointing <laughs> to the promise. Yes. yes. You've got see, you've got say, and now you've got the signs. Amen, amen. Simeon was in the temple and met the baby. Anna was in the temple and met the baby. These are all signs that God gave them. When you meet this child, you will know. When you see this child, I'm showing you something. Beloved of God, they were able to have restored hope because they were seeing signs along the way to say that what God said, God is going to do. And I am suggesting to you, beloved of God, that some of you have been praying for a very long time for one thing or another. You sometimes have shared it publicly, but maybe you've held it more so close to your heart. But here's the thing. God is saying, but I'm giving you some signs and I need you to see the signposts along the way that are pointing to my fulfillment. So maybe you haven't made your million yet. I don't know. Maybe you, have, maybe you haven't made your second million, your third million, your whatever. But what you did do, see is that, oh, wait. There was a windfall that came in that was unexpected. Oh, wait, that's a sign that God is going to keep God's promise to me. And you may be laughing and say, listen, Pastor, we ain't playing a Powerball today. So how are we going to say that? Well, maybe it's not money for you. But some of you have been praying for some things for a very long time. You've been praying for the salvation of your children. You've been praying that God would intervene with them and God is and, and say, listen, God, I need to know before I leave this earth that if I leave, they're not going to kill one another. Beloved of God, let me give you a sign today. I knew there was a good reason. Listen, um, my mom and my daddy, uh, before they left, they wanted us to get along well. And for the most part, we get along much better than we used to. But we had a whole Christmas season and then have one argument whatsoever. Not one. That is God's sign to you. You, that if God can do it for us, God can do it for you too. I'm telling you, beloved God, ain't nobody get to fight no argument. We didn't raise our voices. The babies got along well. It was wonderful. I'm telling you. And beloved God, I'm just saying to you that there's some things that you've been praying for that God is saying. Look at the signs that I'm giving you. If you pay attention to what I'm showing you, you will see that I am going to keep my promise. Some of you have been praying that your body is healed and you're like, well listen, I've been to the doctor time and time and time and time again and it hasn't been there yet. They're giving me medicine after medicine after medicine after medicine. But wait, yes, I still wake up with pain in my body and this and that and the other and the other. But how is your pain level today? Was it as bad as it always is or perhaps is it getting just a little bit better? It is a sign that God is going to keep God's promises. Some of you have been waiting for God to show you the doubt. Some of you have been waiting for how God is going to show you uh, how to live into this one, the principle of Nia, to find your purpose. And you're like, God, I still don't know what you're telling me to do. But you have more peace than you used to have. Oh, the love of God, I am suggesting to you that if you pay attention, if you slow down and pay attention to the signs along the way, you will see that God is pointing to you. I am going to keep my promises and therefore you can have restored hope. You can have restored hope and
Restored hope. Hope has nothing to do with everything being exactly as it should be. Hope is believing in the one who made the promise. Yes, yes, yes. And so today, I extend this hope to you. Mm-hmm. Hope does not mean that everything is perfect. That's not what it means. Hope means that you trust the one who made the promise. So what did God promise you? That's what you can have hope for. That's what you can have hope for and live at peace. Knowing that God has, if God has not already done it, if God has said it, God will do it. Yes. And let this be, let me be the voice of God's Holy Spirit speaking to you today. Reminding you that God has not, God has not forgotten you. God has not given up on you. God has not changed God's mind about you. But what God said, God will do. Amen. 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 I invite the beloved God to stand. Because I'd like to extend to you an invitation. Perhaps you're here today and and you've been hearing your parents, your grandparents, somebody talking to you all these years. Or maybe you haven't. But something came up and was like, well, listen, I, I want to believe that it gets better. I want to believe that God really does love me. How can you help me? How can you give me that assurance? Oh, beloved of God, <coughs> this is the assurance that God gives you. According to Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrates God's love for you and that while you were still a sinner, well, what do you mean I'm a sinner? It means you make mistakes. We all are. It means we miss the mark. If the target is right here, some of us are way over there. And some of us are just a little bit left of center, a little bit right of center. Even so, it's not the target. Whether you're way far off or a little bit off, it's missing the mark. And by definition, that's sin. And so God, perhaps God is giving you a target and you're like, okay, I've missed the mark. But God says, I love you so much. I demonstrate my love for you in this. While you were still a sinner, while you were still missing the mark, not even trying to find it, not even trying to touch the target, God loved you and gave you his son. Like, wait a minute, what? In this Christmas season, oftentimes, we give gifts because we have received them. Oh, they're going to give me a gift, so I have to get something for them. But God didn't do that. God said, I'm giving you a gift. And I hope that you receive it. But you may not. But nevertheless, it's already been extended. That's what God did for us with Jesus. He says, I love you so much, I'm not waiting for you to give me a gift in return. I'm already giving you Jesus. Today, though, if you would like to give God a gift in return, it's not even about giving God a gift. It's about saying, God, I thank you for the gift that you have given me. I am so appreciative of that. And I would like for you to forgive me of my sins and help me to meet and hit the target. That's all it's about. It's about making the decision that you want to walk with Christ. And having the Holy Spirit empower you to meet the mark. And so today, if that's you, I invite you to come. How how can I come? I'm not even physically there. I'm not even in the state. That's okay. If you are here, you can come to the front or you can slip your hand in the air, and that's fine. But if you're not, you can um, text it to me. You can type it in the chat um, um, on Facebook. You can unmute yourself if you happen to be... um, Worshiping with us on Zoom, you can, um, by pressing star six, you may send me an email at pastor-trinitymtc at comcast.net. You can um, send it to me in a, in a direct message. You can call the church's office at 973-744-3396. How you do it is not as important as the fact that you do it. God is a promise keeper. 
Perhaps you're here today and you need a church home and God is leading you to become a part of the Trinity Church family. If that's you, I invite you. You can respond in any of those ways. Amen? Amen. Finally today, um, as we prepare, um, I want to, to pray today. I don't often do it. I don't always do it. But I want to pray. If you want special prayer, you can come to the front. You don't have to. You can stay where you are. But I want to pray. Because I believe there's more than one person mm -hmm, who is who is maybe on the edge and teetering with the hope that God, you promised, and I need some help. You promised God, but the report that I'm getting does not match with what you said. God, what I see does not match with what you said to me, and it's hard for me to believe right now. And so today I want to pray with us and pray for us. I'm going to come down to pray with you. Um, if anybody else wants to come, you can. But I can, you can, we can pray where you are. Let's pray, shall we? God, we thank you so very much for this, our sister. We thank you, oh God, for each and every one of us. Those that are in the pews, those that are watching, those that are listening, those that are worshiping with us. And I pray, God, that you would just bless us. Thank you for all that you have done. God, I pray that you would meet us here in this moment. God, giving us hope for all that you will do as we go into a new year. If you allow us to see midnight, that you will allow us, oh God, to go into a new year. And so, God, I'm praying for each and every one of us. I'm praying, oh God, for Miss Mary, but I'm praying for all of us, oh God, that you would restore our hope, oh God. That we would know with an assurance, oh God, that you have loved us and blessed us, that you are with us. That, God, you keep your promises. God, I thank you. I thank you for lifting the burden of anxiety off of us. That, God, we can have peace that surpasses all understanding because our hope is in you. We thank you, oh God, and we praise you for who you are and all that you've done. Bless us now for that which is spoken aloud and that which we hold close to our heart. God, help us to hope in you more than anything else not putting our trust in any particular other thing else, but putting our trust solely in you. This is our prayer, oh God, and we thank you for it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, beloved God, we are going to share in our Apostles' Creed, and we are going to then have our um, final prayer and benediction. If you are looking for the Apostles' Creed, if you need it, it's um, page 14 in our um, Blue Presbyterian hymnal, reading the traditional version, reading Holy um, Ghost, not Holy Spirit, Holy Universal Church, not Holy Catholic Church. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to try something new today. Is it, are we going to try it? Okay. For those of you who are worshiping with us on Facebook, should you need... Um, the Apostles' Creed, we have a printed copy that we're going to present in the camera so that you should be able to read along with us. Amen. This is an affirmation of what we believe as a church. We are a creedal church, um, a denomination. That simply means we state and write out what we believe. This is one of the oldest and one of the earliest after the Nicene Creed. Or no, the Nicene Creed, I think, came after this. But this is the Apostles' Creed, and we're going to share together in what we believe. So here it is. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray and receive our benediction, shall we? God, I thank you so very much that you have restored our hope. That, God, our hope can be in you because, God, it's not over. It's not over until it is over. As long as we have breath in our body, God, there's still time for you to keep your promises to us. Now, God, I pray that you would bless us and keep us, that you would make your face a favor to shine upon us and be gracious unto us, that, God, you would lift up your countenance upon us and give us your peace. Now unto the one who is able to keep us from falling, who's able to present us faultless before God's throne, um, to the only wise God, our heavenly parent, be glory, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And the people of God said together, amen. 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 Go in hope. Go in peace. Amen. 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 Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year to those that I will not see tonight. For those that I will see tonight, we will bless God and we will share it together. We'll start meet here at 10. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, before you leave, please.